Hi everybody and welcome. Welcome. I'll just wait for people to get on. I'm going to be doing a cosmic chat this evening with Courtney Dawson, who is an evidential medium and a mentor. And she is also an ordained spiritualist minister. So we're going to have a chat today about connecting with loved ones on the other side and ways to develop and how mediumship in itself and connecting with your intuition can really improve your life in a lot of ways. Living more spirit, more soul guided versus fear and ego guided. So I'm so excited that she's gonna be joining and I'm just gonna add her here and we'll get started right away. Welcome everybody to today's Cosmic Chat. Again, my name is Debbie Sugarbaker. If you haven't been here before, I have a channel and also a podcast called The Cosmic Chats with Debbie Sugarbaker, where, where I bring on individuals from all walks of life who are tapping into something that's outside of the box and in that way, helping themselves and helping other pr people improve their lives. So my guest today is definitely out of the box because she's actually tapping into the other side and she's going to help us to do that for ourselves. and give us some tips on how we can do that because she actually teaches people how to practice mediumship. And also we're gonna be talking about intuition and living, like I said in the beginning, a little bit more spirit and soul guided versus fear guided. So Courtney, welcome. Hi Debbie, how are you love? So nice to connect with you. So good to connect with you too. Thank you so much for for joining me today and coming on the Cosmic Chats. It's a really a pleasure. Such a pleasure. We're really excited for our talk today. Yeah. So why don't you, if you can maybe introduce yourself a little bit and give us a little bit of a background story. Obviously mediumship is not something that, maybe it was something that you wanted to do since you were a little girl. You know, maybe it was a, a vocation or maybe it was more of a, a vocation, you know, like from the Latin word voco, call a calling that came to you so we'd love to hear about it um we'll start we'll start there all right so i've been aware of the spirit world since my earliest recollection i was about three years old my mom has told me many many times that from a young age even like two years old i would see things hear things feel things and tell her and my dad and they really had no understanding debbie of what was going on and a lot of their confusion as to what my experiences were really had a lot to do with their limited understanding due to their religious upbringing and their faith like my parents were elders in our christian church and so they really struggled with trying to reconcile my experiences with their faith and with their religious understanding and so it really created this big gap between myself and my abilities and it wasn't that they didn't try to be supportive they just didn't know how to especially when the experiences I were I was having and experiencing on quite a regular basis Debbie were outside of the box of what was their normal you know to be having conversations with God and angels was welcomed and invited and quite encouraged but to think of having any sort of communication with interdimensional beings or souls who no longer have a physical body that was really challenging for them which really made things quite difficult for me because i had no no measure of what was normal what wasn't and what to even do with what i was experiencing and so i did my darndest to really kind of suppress tune out ignore these feelings and these intuitive hunches that i was getting but the more I tried, the more it seemed like there was heightened uh, states of awareness that I would find myself in where I was having direct communication with the spirit world. You know, some people go, well, were you born mediumistic? I don't know, but I do believe that every single person has the potential to develop it. But I did have a near death experience when I was about, I think about 10 months old. And for some reason I was really, really sick. And my mom correlates this to my abilities. She said that, uh, when I was in the hospital, 
I had such a high fever. It was like 108. And they said that if I were going to live, I'd have brain damage. And wow. they even had the pastor come in and do the final prayer. They did spinal taps, everything. They just couldn't find out what was going on with me. And I was this tiny little baby, like, you know, I think my mom's, I think I was about six months old. That's what I was. And my mom said I was 10 pounds. Like I was tiny and they had like tubes in me. They put me in baths with like big bricks of ice to get the fever down. Nothing worked. And so they were kind of at a loss. And then what happened was is, uh, yeah, I had the pastor come in do the final prayer. And somehow I turned around and my mom seems to think or believe or have a hunch that that may have triggered it, but she's highly psychic. So I don't know about that, but I do find that as I try to suppress these abilities, I just kept having unexplainable experiences, having individuals that had bodies, they look like real people, but nobody else could see them. Nobody else could hear them. I would feel things when I wasn't, I wasn't really, can I say, in a position where I should have been feeling them. It, I was doing normal everyday things. I, I never knew about meditation. I never knew about spiritual practices. Like we grew up in a farm. <laughs> so, and I went to a Christian private school. Like I had nothing to like trigger or awaken or get involved in the stuff. They just were always there. And I would see like shadow figures and stuff. And um, I just didn't know what the heck to do with it. Honestly, it caused me a lot of anxiety and I had anxiety most of my life because I was sensing and feeling things that were unexplainable and I couldn't understand it. And um, it made it really, really challenging. And then it wasn't until I was in my early 30s, got divorced, that I went through quite a traumatic event where the abilities just came flooding in and I had to do something with it because they were at the point where I'm hearing them audibly, so through Claire audience, I'm seeing them objectively, like things are moving in my home, I'm hearing people talk and you know, it's interesting because with, with your mediumship, you gotta be very careful. There's this very fine line. Are you actually picking up mediumistically or like you're going into a psychosis and people might think that's very extreme, but I actually see that with people in the work where their abilities become so unmanaged. It can actually cause, I shouldn't say cause, but it can certainly contribute to some mental health issues because if you're seeing and hearing, feeling things and nobody can validate, you think you're going mad, but you're really not. And so I was really at a crossroads and it came at a time where I needed a lot of healing. I need a lot of inner healing. And the spirit world came in and said, okay, swooped in. And they said, now we can get to work because the spirit world will know when we have these abilities, but they're never, ever going to impose upon our free will. That is a gift that each of us in these physical vessels have. And they may give us little synchronicities and signs and dangle a carrot, but it's ultimately up to us to decide what we're going to do with it. And it really took me to get to this place of surrender where I was like, okay, there's something going on that I need to discover about myself. I need to find out what this is. And then it led me onto this path of this is why I've been having these experiences. It was kind of like all the pieces of a puzzle, like the missing pieces of about the uh, puzzle, Debbie, were filling in. And I'm like, oh my God, this is totally why I'm here. This is why I'm having these experiences. This is, makes sense why I was feeling all of those things. And that's why I'm such a big proponent of education in the spiritual arts, particularly where mediumship development is involved because so many people think they're going crazy or have mental health issues or have anxiety. They lack the support. They lack quality mentorship and training to help them understand their experiences. Now, it's not to say people who have like anxiety and stuff don't have them for other reasons, but for myself, it was triggered from my sensitivity when the spirit would gather close and then I would feel the energy, but not knowing what was actually happening caused the anxiety when really all it was happening was a physical reaction. So I never knew that I was meant to do this. I knew that I always had these sensitivities and I have countless, countless, one day I'll write a book, countless experiences about these super normal encounters. But it wasn't until I was in my early thirties that I go, this is why, and this is what I meant to do with my life. And in that there was so much freedom and liberation and peace that I knew if it were, if it were 
not just me. If it were me having this experience, I knew I couldn't be the only one. I knew that there had to be other people out there. So I sought community and I, and I see it all the time in my work. So many people are like, I have these experiences and I don't know what to do with them. And so education, education, I feel is so important. Totally. There's so much with what, with your story. That's so incredibly powerful. And I totally agree with you in the education and also like in the consciousness of it, because some people, they have like, you know, some hesitations about speaking with med mediums, like you said, maybe from more of a religious background, some fears there um, it, that somehow it replaces God or something, you know, like somehow like talking to the, to the spirit world is like somehow replacing your connection with God. And I yeah. think it's beautiful how you talk about, uh, education in the spiritual arts, just like you communicate with other individuals who are here, it's like you can learn how to tap in and communicate with individuals who are on the other side, right? But yeah. it doesn't mean that just like we can do in this lifetime, you can put somebody, I just had a conversation, somebody on a pedestal, and you can kind of do an idol worship with that person, or we do it with celebrities, or you do it with whoever it is, you put somebody, you know, kind of in your mind above your connection with the creator. And that's also an issue, right? Yeah. So it's just interesting how you talk about um, education and the spiritual arts. And I feel like it can help a lot of people and also education about how we can manage our energies. Because those of us who are really sensitive, like you said, you know, we can walk into a room and you can feel, some of us are very good at tuning in to the, to the lowest energies of, in the room. Why? Because when we were children, we needed to be able to keep ourselves safe. So we would tap into that and then kind of unconsciously try to ameliorate that energy, make it better, make sure that it's not going to get out of hand, at least a certain personality, a certain type of us. And I think that what you're discussing, I'm, I'm also a big proponent of it, which is education in the spiritual arts and education in the energetic, uh, in, in, in working with our own energy system and seeing ourselves as like an energy system. So, and also just like, education around what it means you know what it means to be a medium and what it means to be able to um tap in you know and so on that note i wanted to ask you you know when you tap in and let's say you're 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 connecting with individuals on the other side there are also some people who are able to you know tap into angels or then there's like the the ability that each one of us has to have our own conversation with the creator itself which is everything so is there like a certain frequency that you kind of like are able to, I'm, I would say that I'm pretty much like an intuitive person myself or able to tap into different. So I always wonder, is it like going into a certain radio station and then you're able to like a wavelength that you're able to hear or how would you describe it for you, your experience? I would describe it that it's actually multifaceted, but I'll explain it when I'm working with the, with the mediumistic aspect of connecting with people who have crossed over. When we're working with the power, we, are, we have this innate power within us that allows us to tap into or have an awareness of our own uh, spiritual nature, our own powers of awareness. There is this power within us that allows us to tap in to those intuitive abilities. And so there's different practices that help us do that. And so what we want to do is move into the power, which is like revving up the engine in your vehicle, and it allows you to expand the awareness. And I think of the awareness as a whole full body experience. Some people go, well, it's just in my solar plexus. It's just in the heart chakra or just the crown. And I, I really feel like when we're developing as medium, we want to use our whole body as the instrument that way we can get as much information as we can from the spirit communicator and so what we want to do is move our awareness through the power to expand it and it's through the auric field that we're actually receiving the information so the auric field has uh, nerve uh, what do we call it? Nerve ganglia. So it's like little nerve endings, but those nerve endings are actually connected to the physical body, the chakras. But we know the chakras have a correlation between our psychic centers uh, on the psychic level, but also the physical aspect. And what we're wanting to do is attune ourselves and raise our vibration to open up that awareness. So then through the auric field, we then can become aware of all of the energy that is coming into our field of power, coming into our field of awareness. But to get to that state, the 
best way to do that is to go through on the vibration of love. So I'm not looking at, am I, am I listening to a certain music that's got a certain hurts? To be honest, I think anything that moves you into a state of joy and love and excitement is exactly what you need to do. There isn't like a certain musical instrument or a certain meditation you need to do, or like, I think those are so limiting. If it works for you, perfect. The spirit world doesn't require that of us. We just need to raise our vibration. So for me, like if I'm gonna do a demonstration mediumship, I have a playlist. I have Celine Dion, um, I'm Alive, I have Queen, uh, It's a Kind of Magic, I've got Justin Timberlake on it and I have Elton John, so I have certain music I play. Now for private readings, I have certain music that I play and it's got more bass and beat and it just feels more energetic. For me, that works, but it's positive music. Like I wouldn't, some of the stuff I listen to when I'm driving my car, probably wouldn't listen to when I'm gonna go do mediumship. But it's all about moving into the vibration of love because that's the link, that's the vibration that Spirit World comes in on and anything Outside of that, you're gonna have a bit of a disconnect between your awareness and the spirit. So what a medium wants to do is set the intention that they're gonna have that connection with the spirit because the intention is what opens the door for that possibility to even be available to us. Because once we sent the intention, we're literally sending out a mayday sign to the spirit and they're like, okay, he or she's ready to work. So then they're gonna gather close they're lowering their vibration, we're raising ours, and hopefully in the middle, that's where the two are gonna meet. So I don't think of it as just like a frequency or anything. I do think of it as about the intention and then what gets you into that feeling of joy and love. However that works for you, rock gone, perfect. And when it's coming to connecting with angels, now I have only a couple of times actually connected with angels. What I find very interesting is there are some people that feel like they're actually connecting with angels. They're not. It's actually how the the communicator or the divine being is presenting themselves as an archetype. That's a whole other conversation. But actually connecting with the angelic realm, I've done it only a few times in my work, almost 10 years professionally. And the energy of the angels is so intense Debbie, like my body would vibrate just literally vibrate and i never saw like wings or anything i saw the aura of the angels i never saw gender or uh facial features like i couldn't tell if this was male or female and what i've learned from the spirit world is that a lot of the angelic beings they no longer identify with things of a physical nature they move into a state of being they are a being so they're all encompassing and their energy really is all of love so it's hard to define it in physical terms I guess that we would understand but yeah the power of the angels holy oost my heart was racing my body was vibrating and it was just like light all I could see was light and it happened a couple times I was like wow this is totally different than what I was used to working with spirit people right and I don't think there's anything like one is better than the other, but there is a difference for sure energetically. And to connect with them, I, I, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest with you. I would say if you're wanting to connect with the angels, do the same thing you would want to do when you're connecting with spirit. Set the intention, invite them to gather close, and then allow yourself to be open to that experience however they choose to present themselves, however they choose to share information with you. Because I find a lot when we are wanting to work with, you know, interdimensional beings, when we're wanting to work with the other side, in our early stages of development, we can put so many limits on how the other side communicates with us that it actually limits them in their ability to even connect with us in ways that would have very meaningful impacts in our life. Wow. Yeah. It's very powerful what you're saying and how you connect. And it's interesting that you said that you bring your whole body into a vibration, kind of like a vibe, of like you put on music. It's interesting, right before this, I was getting ready and I'm like, usually I like to put on a song that kind of puts me in the mood before I, I yeah. do a, a chat. Um, I didn't, I did like a, a, another meditate, another kind of put another little meditation on in the background. But it's interesting that you said that because I think it's a point that can really 
it's not like really a connection. A lot of times we, especially in our culture, we're very like top heavy in terms of how we use our, ener our energetic system. We use our minds a lot because we need to do a lot of things with our minds, obviously, yeah. and our culture also supports that. Um, but just like how you said that it's bringing your whole body, your whole vibration into this kind of positive space, it's really interesting because I've been doing a lot recently about kind of just staying present and staying embodied. I was noticing how often, like let's say I would be triggered, but I would have a triggering thought, you know, a, a fear that you have in a certain area of your life that you've been dealing with for a while, trigger something inside, immediately I found myself going into the mind, kind of like ruminating, is it gonna happen? Is it not? Yeah. Is that what they're thinking? Are they not thinking that? Is it that? that? And it was like the same, I was like, why can't I like release this situation? And I realized it's because I was just going immediately also as a Gemini moon. So if you're Gemini or have a strong Gemini influence, we can be great community. I, I think that if, if I was able to hone it and to be able to stay in my body, I could actually use, a lot of people say that the Gemini and the Scorpio and the Pisces, for example, that combination can be very good at communicating with like, with, you know, whether it's beings or uh, things that are kind of like in the sixth sense realm. Um, but it, it would definitely take practice of staying in the body, like honing and using all of the, the whole chakra system and not just kind of going up into a, a meditative state. Absolutely. And I find that when people want to start to develop their powers of awareness, whether that be through psychic work or mediumistic work, they always want to go up. They always think it's up wherever, yeah. Wherever the other side is, they think it's up and that anything lower is bad and it's just so not the case. The spirit world is a level of consciousness that exists, coexists at the same time as our 3D world. Mm -hmm. It is a parallel existence and the only thing that separates our world to the spirit world is the veil. And how mediums transcend that is through building the power, raising their consciousness and it's kind of like adjusting the dial a little bit, but setting that intent, raising the vibration to get into that state. But it is all around us. And so, you know, when we start working, we're already working before we even develop our abilities, Debbie. Like we're always feeling, whether we think of it or not, you get a gut instinct. You're like, oh, this just does not feel right. Or for some reason, you just don't jive with a certain person. And something within your gut, your solar plexus is saying, oh, this just, I don't know, some don't feel right, or something gets you so excited and you're like, oh my God, this is amazing, right? And you usually, you have such a visceral response to it through the solar plexus. What can happen is when we already naturally work that way and then begin to work psychically or mediumistically, what can happen is, is there could be such an incredible draw on the solar plexus that it can get quickly depleted if people are not staying grounded, they're not moving into the power, building the power, and it can really deplete that solar plexus a lot where then you're having to do extra healing. So it's actually more efficient and better for you to use the whole body. Totally. Really. And also the thing with the solar plexus, I've done a lot of like work with the solar plexus because I myself had some, had some issues there and a lot of healing to do. But one thing that I will say is that sometimes like you get that feeling in the solar plexus and anyway, it's just been a process to also look at the th things that are affecting the nervous yeah. system. So yeah. if your nervous system, a lot of times it's like, oh, I have like a gut feeling that that's not, well, no, that's actually like kind of like some kind of memory that's being held in my solar plexus of when I was, you know, maybe something in that person reminds me of the person who treated me really poorly before. And so I've held that because the solar plexus holds a lot of memories about, um, uh, respect and you know all different kinds of things like that abandonment all, a lot of our attachment so um i recently met with someone and he was like yeah i'm working with this person i'm just throwing this out there for people because yeah. it's quite interesting yeah. like, i'm working with someone and the, the way that i'm healing myself is i just quit all like caffeine any kind of stimulant and this is interesting to hear like how you work with that and i just like quit everything and it was like really hard for like a week, but now I'm like feeling every, I'm feeling life in a new way. I'm feeling, I'm like, I'm so sensitive in a different way. Whereas before your, your nervous system is kind of like feeling different things. And because there's a lot going on, it's not, 
it's not as maybe as uh, clear. Absolutely. That's a really great point, Debbie. When we are working mediumistically, our central nervous system is being worked a lot. It is in overdrive, depending on how much you're actually doing this work. So when we're working mediumistically, what we're doing is we're really increasing our sensitivity so we can be more aware and be able to more easily perceive the presence of the spirit when they gather close. Right. And so what happens is through development, through practicing, through our different modalities of attunement, what happens is, is we are quickening our central service system we're making it more sensitive because when the spirit gathers close they don't actually you know some people go oh the spirit you know i don't want them to jump on my body well it doesn't work that way they can't but <laughs> they don't have a body so but what we do have is an orc field and their orc field will blend with ours so when their orc field is touching ours we then have it feels like a physical response to the presence of them and that will become more and more sensitive the more that we do this work and i go on and off again with coffee i have no more than half a cup of coffee a day i had a quarter cup of coffee today and that's it like i'm good i can still feel it i'm like mm, i don't quite like that but i was a bit tired today and then you know it's been a week since i've had coffee i go on and off just depending you know right. if i'm working mediumistically i don't use it because it can make it more challenging for you to actually recognize, is this just my nervous system being overstimulated? Right. Or is it actually someone from the spirit that's gathering close? And there's so much more than just making a connection with the, with, in a link with the spirit. There is a lot that's going on physiologically within the physical body of the medium. We've got organs that are being used. We've got the pancreas, we have the liver, we have um, our gastrointestinal system that gets affected obviously the brain central nervous system um the pineal gland there's a hypothalamus i think it's a hypothalamus gland you know towards inside the back inside of the brain there's so much that's being used that we need to be really mindful of our body but also respect it as well in order to do this work and so being mindful of what are you doing to help keep yourself grounded are you sleeping good are you eating good all that sort of stuff right totally yeah sleeping and how do you do you like so let's say I'm just gonna share a story I was sitting at a dinner in uh, it was like a big event and before I'd gone to that dinner I debated whether or not to go I had been feeling like this sadness I as I mentioned to you I my brother and my father passed away in 2018 three months apart so it kind of came back in a wave this was in I think August of September and I was at like a big kind of spiritual gathering. And I said, you know what, I'm just gonna like leave. I'm gonna give myself some space, which I know how to do. Um, having gone through grief that when I'm having those big emotions and it's coming over and I'm starting to feel that sadness. Mm -hmm. So I give myself the space to feel it. I went on a little walk, I was in New York City. So you have like all the city around. And, um, and then I went back to my room, had some water and I said, you know, what? I'm gonna go to the dinner. I don't wanna like to completely isolate myself, you know at this moment I want to I want to connect with people I want to learn it's another thing that I've been learning when dealing with big emotions how to connect with people in those emotions because a lot of times like if you were a kid or if, if you've just kind of learned in your life how to like deal with your big emotions on your own then it's hard to learn how to do it like in community or in connection yeah. with other people that's just like a side note but so I said okay I'm gonna take myself I'm gonna take myself right over to this dinner and just I'm open, I'm open. I was talking to the creator, um, you know, on the way over. I was, you know, saying a few things, talking a little bit with my my dad and brother, just, you know, expressing. And I sit down and the, I'm talking with the woman next to me. I've never met her before. And eventually she tells me that she's a medium. And she's like, and she's like, you know, and actually I, it, there's somebody that wants to connect with you. And she, she <laughs> she's like, tells me, um, you know, you're, and, and I, it was my dad and she's like, he's showing me like a sofa. And I was like, a sofa, that's crazy. Because for like the three weeks prior, I'd been like obsessing about getting a new sofa and I, and I bought one, but then I said, it's too expensive. I'm going to return it. I'm going to find another one on Craigslist or I'm going to like, didn't know what I was going to do. And I was just thinking every day, I'm one of those people who like, once I get an idea, this is what I want to do, by the way. I still didn't get it, but, <laughs> but that wasn't the point. It seemed like the point was so that she could tell me, showing me a sofa. And she told me like, 
he says, you're shopping for a sofa. And he was with you when you were shopping for the sofa. And she gave me the price of the one that I ended up ordering. She said like, you know, he, he told me it's like this amount of money. I was like shocked, you know? And so I proceeded to have a conversation with him and, um, and, and, and also then like with my brother and with a few other people. And it was so crazy because <laughs> I was just like, my whole psyche underwent this, uh, like a transformation, you know, because for example, I'll just share like a little message that my dad had. He said, you know, he sees you and you're sitting there with your sweater over your knees and your laptop and you're working and you're doing this, but you're, you're kind of there. You kind of feel alone. And there's so he's telling you that there's so many people around you, but you kind of go into this space where you're waiting for someone to come to you and you need to like put yourself out there more and to make the effort to connect. And when you do, you're going to like kind of break that I don't know what you would call it, kind of like a little loneliness, isolation part of myself. And that was really, really helpful, you know? And you could say, that's like a message that just, it's almost like you're speaking with somebody who's here, you know, because anybody who's here, they can give you a message that can help you. So anyway, I'm just sharing that with everyone that it's kind of like a, a very, it was a really nice mediumship story. Well, well the spirit world, World, our loved ones who've passed over we have a tendency to think of them as still part of our past but they're right. not they're very much a part of our present just not on a physical sense when physical death takes place what happens is their soul returns to its true nature which is spirit we've always been spirit We've been spirit longer than we have a physical being. And so when physical death takes place, the physical, yes, passes, and that is incredibly difficult and hard, and we go through grief, and it's awful. Let's face it, it's awful. Totally. But their, their soul continues to exist. And through the power of mediumship, when someone can bring through pieces of information that would are undeniably true and accurate that you can't google you know that brings evidence of soul survival or proof of survival and that's the whole point about mediumship and mediumship in and of itself debbie it's all about healing like how amazing is it for you to get that little bit of information and the impact it had on you that's the whole purpose of mediumship yeah it really really is but and never it never alone even when you feel like you're very alone yeah. and you're alone with your feelings and you're misunderstood you're not alone yeah but on, on that note how often how much do you think like are they always with us because then you obviously also want to have some kind of like privacy and boundaries just like you would have with your father or brother like in in the real world so or with anybody so how what is your take on that? Like, do they read all of our thoughts? Is it because I was walking to that event and I was thinking about them in my mind and kind of processing that grief? So maybe that's kind of drew them in because my consciousness was there? Or what is your take on that? I think With it could be a grief? couple of things, Debbie, because when we're having thoughts of our loved one who've our loved one or loved ones who have passed over, sometimes we think it's our own memories that are coming to the surface or that we're recalling them when in fact it's actually our loved one saying hey do you remember when we did this oh my god can you believe i did this do you remember that and it's actually their presence that's gathering close to you that's triggering the memory mm. and so there is a correlation between our experience of thoughts and feelings and them actually being the ones that trigger it sometimes we think it's us and it's actually them or vice versa but I do think that our loved ones in spirit, they're very much aware of what's going on in our life. Now, the cool thing about them is they don't have to get on a plane, they don't have to get in a car to come visit us. They are energy, and we know that energy can be in multiple places at the same time. I mean, I'm in Canada, you're in America, we're on the internet, and we're still connected. And there is a energy, multiple energies that are at play at right now that we can't see, but it doesn't change the fact that they're still working. Right. And so it is the same that is true for when our loved ones are around us. They could be with you, but they could also be, you know, with a sibling or a parent or, you know, a cousin, right? At the same time. But the cool thing about, and this is my understanding based on my experience up to this point in my life, is that 
our loved ones, we are energetically connected to them. I like to think of it as like uh, threads in a tapestry that are woven together, our love. It is unbreakable. Nothing can sever that, not even death. And that love bond, that tapestry of the love continues beyond bodily death. And through that tapestry, there is an energetic connection that connects our soul to theirs. And so when we're thinking or partaking in certain events or going to a certain place, energetically, they're already going to have an awareness of it. So so with respect for us, they're not going to interfere, let's say, if we are, you know, in an intimate moment. Let's talk about people go, do they know I'm or you know what it or don't? And I'm like, uh maybe. Yeah. Or like maybe I they, saw a book that was called like, Do Dead People Watch You Shower? Have you heard of that book? I have. My <laughs> friend has going. it. And I just That's a good title for a book. <laughs> yeah, because people think that. And it's like, my God, would they have ever done that when they're here in the physical? Probably not. So chances are they're not doing that in the afterlife. And so I do believe that through that energetic connection that we have with our loved ones, they do have an awareness of what's going on and they respect that. So that's kind of the, the long and short of my take on that. But there will be times when they want to gather close to us because remember, they miss us just as much as we miss them. But the bonus is that they have an awareness that life continues beyond bodily death. And there's so many of us that are still here in the physical that are either exploring it, are fearful of it, or have no idea that it even exists. They have that knowledge, which is why they gather close all the time and give us signs and symbols and angel numbers and all these beautiful synchronistic events to say, hey, I'm still here, hello, right? To let us know that that love continues and will never be broken. And so, yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it based on my experiences up to this point. Yeah. Amazing. And how many, have you done like a lot of, a lot of readings since you've started doing it full time? I have. So I've been doing readings for almost 10 years and I don't know, I've lost, I don't keep count, but I've done thousands. Uh, I do private readings. I also do, you know, sometimes a little bit of readings in my classes just for demonstration purposes, just to show them this is how we do this. And then as a minister, I demonstrate mediumship in divine services within the spiritual churches. That's a big part of our philosophy is the continuous existence of the soul and mediumship will prove that should prove that. Right. And I've also done a lot of volunteer work within the spiritualist churches as well, functions and stuff. So I've done many readings and different events where we're demonstrating mediumship. And so I've done a lot. And what I've come to learn, Debbie, about mediumship is that the more that we allow ourselves to be a channel for the presence of the spirit, the more that we allow ourselves to be this beautiful conduit and this being a conduit for them, we're an ambassador for the spirit. And if we can come into this work with an openness of mind and heart, we can be moved by the power. And the power I feel is like love. And what is love? Love is eternal. It is timeless. It is ageless. It cannot be boxed. It cannot be, cannot conform to anything other than what it is. And through that vibration of love, we can allow ourselves to be used in such a way that we can bring such a tremendous amount of healing to the earth in ways of helping people's lives transform. I've seen people come in, in a private sitting where they're, at a place of contemplation of like, do I even want to be here anymore? Because they're so distraught over the departure of their loved one. And by having a communication with their loved one, when their loved one is bringing through information that defies logic, there's no way that I could ever get that. It completely changes their outlook on the death process. Doesn't take away their pain, but by having a different perception, it aids them in their healing journey. And I really feel as well when we are working with the spirit world, we also can help remove the fear of death. Now, before I even started developing my mediumship, I was petrified of death. And it got worse when my daughter was born. She was born still. And so when I had my two pregnancies after my two children that are living, I was so scared of death 
And I did have a few afterlife communications with her, spontaneous. I wasn't seeking her. And um, to be honest, I was scared of seeing spirits because I was young. I was like 18, right? Now I'm like, oh, it's totally fine. I'm good with it. But I didn't have the understanding. And I see how the fear of death can really traumatize a lot of people. And it's like it binds them. And when people are in a state of fear, it is so controlling and it can really negatively impact everybody's lives and their mental health. It's horrible. And I remember like when my kids were little, my, when my daughter was born, um, I used to put a little mirror under her nose just to make sure there was steam on the mirror because I was so scared she was going to die. Mm. And then when I finally got to the place in my life, Debbie, where I was like developing and sitting in circle, I realized that there is nothing that will ever, ever, ever separate me or my loved ones, separate me or my children, not even death. And it was like, whew, this weight was just gone. And I see it with people. Mediumship has the potential to change lives. And I see it all the time, not even just in my work as a medium, but through other friends that I know who are mediums as well. It is so, so impactful, the work that we do. And this is why I'm a big advocate for ethical mediumship because I see it far too often. People who have a little bit of abilities and think that they're ready to go working with the public and inadvertently cause more damage than, than healing. And so I really feel like we need to be really responsible in this work because we literally have people's hearts and souls in our hands. And it's so delicate. It's, so, it's such a delicate uh, process, particularly when people are in the early stages of grief. Totally. Right? And I think you also have to think you have a really strong connection with, with your own connection with the universe, with the creator in whatever way, obviously to be guided by that yeah. rather than by our own and to know the difference and to know the difference between when it's my own ego and when it's, you know, when I'm hopefully God willing being a channel for something for somebody else, which I think that we all can be at any moment of the day you know when you if you set that as your intention that you want to be connected to the creator today and i want an awareness of that force and i want to be able to stay present and to be aware that that's like a living intelligence that's here with me now then when i'm in that consciousness and that frame of mind i'm automatically going to be in a better position um to be a channel in whatever way even if it's just a channel of a smile for somebody yeah. or I remember my spiritual teacher, her name was Karen Berg, and I remember her saying, you know, even the way that you sometimes, even the way that you say something, you can give a person like certainty in the in in their process and in their life and in their, you know, that things are going to be okay. Just in the tone of your voice, you can even pass that to another person just by the way you say like, hey, how are you? Or, you know, what's going on with you? Or, or that whatever, whatever it might be, but just to be in that place where I want to be a channel. And then I know that there's a lot more technicalities. I've taken some classes with um, James Van Prague, who is a pretty well-known medium, yeah. but he also has some great, some great exercises in terms of, you know, running your energy and learning how to connect your and your energetic system with love. He's amazing. I took my spiritual life coaching certification with mm -hmm. his school. I love James. He's a wonderful and he's very heart centered. He's very realistic though. And, and I love that, you know, this is what it's about. This is what it's not about. Right. And so I really admire him. He's really a pioneer in the work. Pioneer. And as we continue to do this work, there's a huge responsibility with it, particularly, particularly where social media is involved because there are a lot of people that honestly, a lot of the stuff that they're sharing is lacking in education, lacking in accuracy, mm -hmm. and isn't really offering value to people. So people that are looking or curious on a journey of self-discovery and are wanting to unlock their spiritual gifts, be mindful about who you're seeking out for mentorship, teaching, you know, because sadly, there is ethics that are lacking and so much of the teachings. And that's why I've been very selective in who I have sought mentorship from. Because if you're coming into this work and think of it as like a clean slate, you have, you have nothing to base those teachings on. You could 
easily be led astray to think that certain types of uh, information is accurate, helpful, and it's not, or even appropriate, and it's not. And also, too, about when to give a reading and when not to give a reading. You know, I will not be the type of medium that will ever go up to somebody in a gas station or a grocery store and give a reading. It just, for me, it's so unethical. And what I've learned with the, and some people go, oh, I don't agree with that. Well, that's okay. That This is my philosophy. You don't have to take it. I won't do that because I never read for people without their permission. And I don't believe that there's such a thing as an urgent message. The spirit world's intelligent. They, if they can't get a message through, you believe me they will find somebody else right. because there's nothing worse than I've actually had it happen to me where I've had somebody randomly come up oh I've got so and so here in the from the spirit world uh what shocked the hell out of me but second uh no no I don't even have a person like that in the spirit world sorry but it totally caught me off guard right and so people that don't even have this awareness or are even open to the possibility of afterlife communication that can really rattle them and be off-putting when it comes to a place in their life where they might even be considering going to have a reading with a with a psychic medium right so i really like to teach people about doing this work from a place of being of service to the spirit world and to people who are here in the living you know if you're wanting to do this because you want to become rich and famous um, go get another vocation. <laughs> this is, this isn't it. It's about, doesn't mean you can't be abundantly paid for your spiritual gifts, but it certainly should not be the number one thing that you're looking for when you're doing this work. Silver Birch, who is an incredible spirit guide for Maurice Barbonell, who is a trans medium and an incredible trans medium. They work for like 40 years. You can get Silver Birch books through psychic press uh, you can purchase them online at the Arthur Finley College and he always said you know this is a sacred work and the journey of mediumship is a lonely one at well you know at times as well because not everybody understands it and there's so much discovery of self that goes on not only are we helping others heal there is an internal healing that's taking place as well and we need to allow the time to do that but we need to be very mindful about the office we take when we're doing this work. We're representative for the spirit world, not the other way around. Because if there's no spirit, there's no mediumship. There's just not. So we need to be very respectful of it and, and enter it into a place of uh, sacredness. Um, and that probably that goes for anybody that you want that you're seeking help from, you know, obviously, yeah. like if you're going to go to a doctor, or you're going to go to any kind of healer, or you're going to go, you obviously want someone who you vibe with their consciousness, you know, yeah. that maybe they have a certain, just something that really clicks with you that resonates. I'm a big fan of what resonates like in, in me, or at least then taking the time to, if I'm not sure, you know, Usually I, for example, and people who come on my show, it's usually somebody that I have a, a, either I've done a session with them. I'm familiar with them. Um, I have listened to some of your lives. So I kind of took a little uh, liberty there. And I know that I also heard that you spoke with uh, Dr. Lottie who came on my show. So anyway, but usually it's somebody that I've had a direct experience with. And then I'm, I would like to be able to have other people to connect with it because I feel like that's part of my role in this world is to help people to connect with things that are um, that are that are outside of the box or that maybe they wouldn't usually connect with um, and you know it's always up to the person I think that's like the main thing is to keep our sovereignty no matter what yeah to keep your sovereignty and to have that connection with your higher self if you want to call it that um, and also, you know, with the creator, with with the universe, with source, whatever you call it. I I personally believe that that's very important. I'm sure that you could be, you know, atheistic in a way, but, you know, th to at least have that inner connection. I totally agree. Absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree, Debbie. So is there anything that you could kind of leave us with maybe something that you teach your students because I know that you have classes that you have. So if anybody's interested, you can check out Courtney's Instagram 
and website and check out the classes that she teaches. And maybe if you'd like to, to share something with us here today that could be helpful in terms of helping people in this moment to, or, you know, for this evening, for the next, whatever it is to have, to be more spirit guided versus fear guided. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the first thing that we need to do before we begin to connect with the world of spirit is we need to be able to connect with our own soul. Because if we don't recognize who we are as a soul being, it's going to make it really difficult for us to be able to recognize the presence of the spirit when they gather close. So I would invite you to, whether it be right now or after the show, to take a moment and just place both your hands on your heart and just gently close your eyes and then be in an area where you're not disturbed. And then just begin to follow the breath. Just notice the inhale and the exhale. And just follow the air as it moves in through the nose and fills your lungs. And as it leaves your body. And do that for a few moments. Just noticing the inhale and the exhale. And just allowing yourself to become an observer. And any time your mind becomes distracted, don't pay any attention to it. Just notice it and let it go. And then just bring your awareness back to the breath. And when you do this, you allow yourself to become very present in this moment. And just begin to feel what you feel like in this moment. Just do a body scan from the bottom of your feet all the way to the top of your head. And as you breathe, just move your awareness from the top of your tips of your toes all the way through the body. And just noticing any, any tension, any aches. And just breathe into that area. And allow that, that point, that area within the body to just relax. And when, once you've reached the top of your head, just take a nice, slow, long, deep breath in and let it all go. And, and just noticing yourself becoming more calm and more relaxed. And then just to Allow your awareness to begin to expand beyond your physical body. Feel in front of you and behind you, above and below, to your left and to your right. Feel all around you, the entire room that you're in. And just notice any energies or sensations that you feel. And now that you've already become aware of what you feel like, you begin to notice the energy of the room that you're in. Just notice whatever comes up and let it go. Allowing your mind to be very calm and neutral. And then send a thought out to one person in the spirit, whether that be a guide, a loved one. Invite them to gather close and without any expectation, only set that invitation out. And then just begin to focus on the breath, noticing the inhale and the exhale. And as you have set that intention, the world of spirit has heard it and has answered your call. And as you stay in this beautiful energy, this beautiful feeling of calmness and relaxation, it allows you to become more sensitive to the presence of the spirit. And as you set that intention and invited them to gather close, begin to notice anything that occurs within your field of power. Don't look for it, just observe. It might be an increase in your heart rate, pins and needles in a limb. Maybe you feel warm or cold. Maybe there's a draft when there wasn't one previously. Whatever it is, just notice it, accept it, and then bring your awareness back to the breath. And as you're in this state of neutrality and relaxation, ask your loved one, your spirit communicator, to impress upon your mind one thought or one memory that you have with them. Or if it's a spirit guide you've invited to gather close, Ask them for one thing that you need to know in this moment. Not looking for it, but allowing it to come into your awareness without effort. And while you're waiting, just continue to focus on the breath, noticing the inhale 
inhale and the exhale. And when you've received that memory or that message, thank the spirit for their love, for their support, their guidance. And then just ask them to gently step back out of your space and begin to notice how you respond to the change within your field of power. And it won't be like a big gust of wind. It'll be very, very subtle because the spirit world knows that perhaps this might be the first time that you've ever allowed them to come this close. So they don't want to shock you or make you feel uncomfortable. And the more that you do this, the more sensitive you'll become. But always thank the spirit world for their time. And when you're ready, just begin to deepen the breath and feel yourself becoming more aware of the physical body wiggling your limbs, your toes, your ankles, your arms and your wrists. And when you're ready, you can bring your awareness back to this space. And that, that is something that you can do right now. You can do it anytime, wherever. And that is a beautiful way for you to connect with your own soul, connect with the spirit. And it doesn't have to take a lot of time. But the more time that you spend in it, the more that you become aware of the very fine and subtle changes that happen as the spirit gathers close and as they move out of your field of awareness. Beautiful. Wow. Oh, thank you so much for taking us on that journey. You're welcome. <sighs> Feels very gentle, you know. It is. Spirit communication is so natural. And it's interesting because depending on the energy of the communicator, I am sometimes so relaxed because spirit communication is so natural. It has been happening since the beginning of time. And there's a really good book. It's an old book. It's hard to find, but you can sometimes get it through the bookshop at the Arthur Finley College. And it's called Spirit Communication as Noted in the Bible. And it's from a gentleman, a pioneer of spiritualism, Alfred Kitson. And he's actually gone through the Bible. It's a really small booklet. And he has noted occurrences of spirit, communica spirit communication in the Bible. And we know that the Bible and Christianity has only been around like 2,000 years. It's been happening way before that. And if we look at spirit communication as something that is normal because we're spirit first before we're a human right. and it's something that we're naturally doing but it's our human mind that doesn't always have the awareness then we can demystify what is actual genuine spirit communication and what is our own mind or what is our psychic senses picking up on information right. it could be so powerful and so healing to so many people and that's what it is it's so natural and so when i'm talking about mediumship when i'm teaching about it i don't sound esoteric i don't try to sound mystical because it's something that happens on a day-to-day -day basis our our loved ones are always trying to communicate with us and we have the ability to do it whether we think we're a medium or not we just have to create the space in order for that communication to take place and through practice and proper instruction you can do it and, you know, not everybody's going to be a professional medium. My God, I never thought I was going to be, believe me. And, but it was through understanding and teaching that I go, oh, wow, this is like normal. <laughs> this is like nothing woo-woo or creepy. Uh, it's so, so opposite. It's so peaceful and so calming. And it really has the power to change lives. And, and so honored to be able to do this for the spirit. Wow. Beautiful. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing that with us. You're so welcome, Debbie. It's been great to be able to connect with you here. I'm great to be. I'm happy to be here too. And I am just sitting in front of my sister-in-law's spirit animal, which is one of her cats, <laughs> which was like a feral cat. I just like noticed like she's been sitting here so quietly, like curled up for the whole chat. And my sister-in-law, she's always tells me, you know, like we just got this cat. She was like a wild feral cat, you know, but she. She became like my protector, my spirit animal, like in all these different, she really sleeps right here. And anyway, I just thought it's interesting. You know. I love it. My cats, my, I have two cats. 
two tuxedos. I love them. They're my little babies. And they love it when I'm doing reading. So I do in, I do in-person readings out of a studio, but then I do a lot of my stuff online and they got to be in my office. So I have my partition, but I can hear them behind. I can hear my ones snoring. They love the energy of spirit and spirit gathers close, whether we're in a mediumship reading or not, when we're talking about them, when we're talking about the philosophy of mediumship or the mechanics of mediumship, when we're talking about spirituality, the spirit world gathers close. And animals, of course, they have that sixth sense. Uh, we have that sixth sense too. I actually believe it's our first sense, but that's okay. That's another time, another topic. And, and they love that. They are drawn to it. And so I'm not surprised that the cat's there. <laughs> the kitty's here and now I hear my little... Harry's scratching at the door. Hello. Don't forget me. <laughs> I'm gonna come in. Thank you so much. Thank you. If anybody, thank you to everybody who joined here. I saw your lovely comments. I'm so happy that you enjoyed and that you were able to be with us here. And I hope that you share it with your friends, with your family, you know, with anybody who might benefit from just listening to Courtney's experiences, to her expertise in this area. And um, thank you, thank you to everybody for being here and check out her website and check out her Instagram handle and your classes. Amazing, Debbie, hope you enjoy the rest of your evening, love. Thank you, thank you, you too. Thank you everybody, Bye. have a great evening. Everybody. Happy New Year. Hi everybody, thank you so much for your support of the Cosmic Chats, for your attention and your energy and just being a part of each episode, it makes all the difference. So if you haven't subscribed before, please consider doing so. The more subscribers that we can get, the wider the net that we can cast, and the more and more people that we can bring in to share their insights, consciousness, and wisdom, and reveal that in the universe for all of us. So thank you so much and have a great day.